Welcome to a little guide all about the Island Sanctuary. It is a very laid-back piece of content that does have a lot of min-maxing for those who don't know how to just sit back and relax. It's not much really to teach and has no craft it or gather it experience required, but we can go through it, up through the current cap. But really, only the first five levels have any real progress to go over. And apologies for the quality of the first bit of footage, I stream the beginning bits of the Sanctuary. If you like my content, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Join me on Twitch for very uncommon streaming, or some of my other links like Discord and merch. Before you can even unlock the Sanctuary, you must be level 90 and complete the Endwalker 6.0 main story. The quest will be sitting next to the Aetherite in Old Charlian. Regardless of story completion, however, you can invite anyone to the island. We'll cover that feature later. Head to Morbi Dry Docks and get your new island. Follow Tataru up the path to start the tutorial quests and meet your army of mammoths who will be helping you along the way. Our first task is to make a base of operations, a task that will immediately take you into the wilds where you will spend most of your time. Head east through the cave and you'll be where you need to be. Swap to the gather mode within the Isle Keeps index and just click anything that glows. You may or may not notice that every different object has a different gather. Palm trees giving palm leaves, big bushes giving aisle wort, etc. Just go and collect. We need specifically a few stones, branches, and palm leaves, but you'll want to check everything you pass by for what they may or may not give you. Every node has something you need or want. If you just want to rush to the objective though, you want to gather from palm leaves, these basic scrangly looking trees, and the rock piles. You can return manually back to the Mammoth, or use the I'll Return duty action. I would recommend the duty action since you will want to get used to it. The island is pretty big. You'll get your crafting button unlocked now. Open it up and craft the hatchet, the only thing available to craft. This will open you up to doing the next step of the shelter, the shelter itself. You need sand, stone, vines, palm leaves, and a new item only now available with the hatchet. Palm logs are from the same trees as the leaves. Go drifting through the cave on Yeshiba Inu to check for yourself. Trees will now give two items, still depending on the node. It doesn't randomly give you different rewards, but guarantees you one of both items. The hatchet only works on trees, pretty obviously. But otherwise, go collect what you need. And maybe some more. There's no hurry to drift back. Hand in the items and you'll have the entire thing already done. These are very efficient mammoths, turning 10 logs into, like, 40. You can now access some merchants to spend island-obtained currency, use an orchestrion, and invite your friends. The important currency is the blue cowries. The green ones are essentially from collecting tons and tons of items. The new big stuff is all blue cowries, the main source we'll get into later. You'll have ranked up from doing this objective almost guaranteed, and we'll have a new task to go through, simply talking. Phew, what a difficult task, huh? But this will unlock the croplands. It's a small set of five plots, but it sure looks like there's space for more, doesn't it? You probably picked up some seeds while gathering in the wilds. You'll be given five seeds for free if you didn't, but it's the same pumpkin seeds you probably found. Swap from gather mode to sell mode. Plant them, then swap to watering to water them. Everything will take two days to grow, real time. So you don't even need to check it much. Just a daily visit to water. Talk to the furball, go back to the cropland, and start up building a pen for animals. You'll be given some free nets to unlock the capture mode. You may have noticed some monkeys and sheep while you did some exploring. Turn on capture mode, equip your nets, and go capture them. Don't bother with chocobos though. Size of the animal matters. Nets only work on small animals, and you'll get bigger nets as you go on. Also, capturing is not guaranteed. You can spend a good 10 nets on a single animal and it just end up running away. Head on back and check on your captured animals. You'll be given some feed to, well, feed them. You'll want to do this daily. You put on the feed mode, equip the food, and feed the animal. You'll also be able to pet the animal and gather items from them every day. But also, petting them. Pet the sheep. And make sure you give your animals good nicknames. You'll be given recipes for island feed and more nets. This will allow you to craft more food and capture more animals. You'll need a lot of apples to keep up as you grow your island, but you'll progress as you go. Return to the furball once more with your island at level 3. 
clear away more brush and you'll have more plots. But this time, not for a base of operations. We'll also be able to release minions onto the island to populate it a bit more. On top, we can now make a stone hammer. This will be needed for building workshops on these new plots. This basically just carries you into the same loop over and over to unlock more features. Talk to the next NPC, give them the needed items, repeat. Go out and start farming for what you need to complete your next task. Remember that every different looking node will have different rewards. This includes after getting a tool for that specific node. Each node will have a new item. Make your hammer, gather the new stuff, and then go make your workshops. This is part of the main endgame of the island. I'm going to go over this system in whole once I've finished with progression because there's a lot to do with it. But do make sure to watch that section. You will want to start playing with the workshop immediately. I mean like right now. Rank 4 you can renovate the cabin and will need another new item, copper ore. But talking to the furball will basically confirm that you are completely out of the tutorial. The rest of expanding is up to you to discover. Your next available task will be a red icon. He wants some tools. Tools that you have to craft. Which just goes back to copper ore, which means go find it. Explore and just hit random nodes and you'll eventually find what your hammer works on. After finding an item for the first time, the gather book will show you a suggested place on the map for obtaining and farming an item in large quantities. But this is not always the best place, so be experimental. The best place to find copper ore will be in the bottom right corner of the map. There's a circular path you can take that will quickly gather up a lot of copper for your new projects. This is how we will see gathering cycles in action. Nodes respawn after 10 other nodes have been gathered from. Starting from the first copper, you will gather 5 copper in a row. On the way to the furthest copper, you will pass a tree. Gather this. Get the 6th far copper and head towards the middle of the mountains for a 7th and 8th copper. Head over to the bush at the edge of the hill and gather that. Jump down, gather the other bush. The first copper will have respawned. This is how you make a cycle. Go for the nodes you need and make a circle as best you can. Not every item has a good cycle. Some don't have them at all. Others are only available with flight. As you get more comfortable with the island, more cycles will naturally present themselves. But sometimes even the best cycle for an item will only have two or three items in it. Let's start with making the tools with our new copper. Once you've made the tools, you'll also need to give the mammoth 500 of your blue cowries. Just by doing the weekly challenge log and normal progression, these costs aren't ever a concern, especially if you're doing the workshop stuff too. As you progress, you'll need to make new kinds of mammoth tools and spend even more calories on it. And you will definitely want to expand continually, as they always lead to new plots. Though this first one is a unique plot type for landmarks, special sites that improve your island mammoths and their abilities. These are where everyone's islands might start to differ. Every island is the same, but where you put your landmarks will be your own decision, as they all do the same thing. After expanding far enough, we will unlock the granary. This allows you to send your mammoths out for up to a week of time for 50 calories a day. While out, they will gather resources for you. This includes rare resources completely unique to the granary. You can't get these yourself, so you'll want to be sending them out often. The cost seems steep, but no. Send them out as much as possible. We'll also be able to expand our cropland and animal pen up to a maximum of 20 each. If that's not enough of a reason to keep expanding, well, there's more. Your mammoths can care for your crops and animals for you for an extremely low cost. All you need to do is ensure there is a steady supply of feed and seeds, and 300 blue calories a day. Only 300 to care for a maximum 20 of each, which is a fraction of what you can earn just by doing things on your island. Mostly the workshop. Once you have things rolling, a lot of things can just be nicely automated for you. Cuts down on any potential work you feel is involved in it. Allows you to focus on the wider gathering and workshop. Before we dig into that deep topic, let's mention a few smaller topics that I passed up. There's other tools you will obtain along the way. A shovel for dirt piles, you can get some fish stuff, upgraded tools, a level 3 hatchet with the expansion into ranks 11 and 12 even, and of course a rank 10 and 12 cutscene with a glamour set reward. 
all the reason to keep ranking up. The expansion EXP bonuses will not be enough to max you out, not even close. You will need to do some major gathering, or at least farming and animal caretaking. Or again, the workshop. The workshop is the great equalizer the moment you obtain it. Otherwise, you will be gathering a lot of items. You'll be doing that anyway, including for the 30,000 gathers achievement. Yes, really. As you rank up, you'll gain renovations and upgrades to your buildings. Your main base, I believe, is completely glamour, but I think you also get bonus rank EXP, so worth doing. But won't have any long-lasting effect on your island. Be willing to go for it all. At rank 10, you will gain flight. This will open you up to new spawn points and a new item or two. But importantly, this makes for a lot better travel around the island, much faster than ground movement. There's also the concept of rare animals. There's about 20, a fully packed animal pen, rare animals that spawn under specific weather and time windows. In the description is a link to a site with the timers of the rare spawns. If you want yourself each of the rare animals, or even to pick and choose some of them, make sure you check on it every now and then, lest you miss your next shot. Capturing animals is again, not guaranteed. Here is what the logbook says is the recommended location to find every item. Alright, let's talk the workshop. This stuff is confusing, and literally is spreadsheets, and encourages you to make your own to benefit further. But let's start with the basics. The workshop is a weekly activity that is split into each of the seven days per weekly season. It starts from weekly reset time, and continues going until next reset. On the left is the hour, with it segmented by hour, since it works on an hourly basis. Clicking the beach chair and umbrella button will allow you to choose which days your mammoths have off. The default recommendation is Day 1, Tuesday, and Day 7, Monday. If you need to move said day due to a bad pattern, it's easy to do since you can adjust days off until that day occurs. Clicking the plus sign will allow you to assign a work order to fill the schedule. I suggest you immediately swap from a time sort to a category sort until you get used to how it all works. Pop around and look at items. I would recommend the Woodworks tab since it has a lot of good examples. Clicking an item we have a lot of info. Time, how many hours an item takes in the schedule. Quantity, how many of that item gets made. Value, how many calories that item is worth at a base value. Before modifiers, this number will never change. Category, what kind of item it is up to two categories. For example, this chair is both a furnishing and a woodwork. The second bit of info is more confusing, but even more important. Popularity, better called demand. How much people want an item applies to the entire week, will increase or decrease the amount of calories an item is worth when sold. Supply, how much of an item is up for sale in markets, will increase or decrease the worth of items when sold can change daily, and has a greater effect than popularity. Demand shift, whether or not the supply is meeting demand. If demand is plummeting, the supply is higher than the demand. So if there's an insufficient supply but a demand shift of plummeting, expect to see tomorrow's supply be sufficient or even surplus. Predicted popularity, what the popularity will be for the item next season. This tells you whether or not you should be growing a specific fruit in your field since, oh, strawberry jam is going to be very high demand, or such. 
And then also what materials you need for the mammoths to craft said item. See where the spreadsheets are starting to kick in? It gets worse when you check the supply and demand menu. Once you get more experienced, this menu is key for planning your daily agenda and maximizing your profits. For now, make your goal just to be to fill in the schedule for a workshop. Items cost 4, 6, or 8 hours to make. And with 24 hours in a day, the math is simple. You can do 6 items at 4 hours each. Or you could do a 4 hour, 2 6 hours, and an 8 hour. Or you can do 2 4 hours, and 2 8 hours. Or just do 3 8 hour crafts. Or just do 4 6 hour crafts. Other options that don't use all 24 hours aren't inherently bad while learning, but is an inefficiency you might want to be rid of later, or even keep when you get really min maxi. Depending on what you picked, you might see efficiency bonus appear on the item. That is because you picked two items within the same category back to back. You can't spam the same item over and over for this bonus, but something like alternating the same two items over and over will proc efficiency. But because you are doing something in the same category as the previous craft, your mammoths can create more of that item, increasing your income for that craft. This will also increase the groove in the top right corner once the item has been crafted. The maximum possible value is determined by how developed your island is, including your landmarks being filled in. This further increases the ability to make more than just one item. Come back to when the item has been crafted and will receive a good horde of EXP and blue calories. This can level you up super fast for no effort beyond making sure you have enough materials for the mammoths to craft. Now comes the tricky part. Without using some kind of spreadsheet solver, which I'm pretty sure exists online, you will have to do a lot of juggling and micromanaging to ensure you maximize the gains even a little. There's an achievement for getting 17,000 calories, yes, 17,000, in a single season. A single week. That is how high a profit you can get when you know what you are doing and have a good week. The typical pattern of a week of your workshop goes as follows. Alternate two four-hour crafts to build up Groove for the first two days. Yes, every week. Groove will reset every Tuesday. The go-to tends to be potions and fire sand, but depending on supply and demand, there can be better options. Then days 3 through 5, focus on maximizing profits. Making items with the highest demand, lowest supply, and ending the day on a super strong 8 hour craft if possible for the highest gains. Make sure you're getting efficiency bonuses too. The other two days are rest days, wherever you put them. Again, start with Tuesday and Monday, and move Monday when it looks like a specific day is going to be terrible for your profits. But there's always exceptions to these rules. If there's a day where there's some extremely stupidly good items to go for, like high popularity absolute zero supply items, you will end up better in the long run going for that item due to both multipliers making it worth more than double the base price. The bonus groove won't be worth it on some days. And this is still very much a surface level go over of the workshop. There's so many more little things you can do day to day to try and math out the best possible work orders. That achievement for 17k? Yeah, uh, the highest of the highs can be up toward 30k in a week. Average more toward the mid 20s. And that's why the costs for the daily animal and crop tending don't matter. If you keep up on your workshops and all, you're going to earn far far more calories than you could even attempt to lose in a week. There's a dedicated Discord for this, and apparently weekly Reddit posts. I assume similar to Kyoko Star's fashion reports. So there's even people willingly doing the work for you. Just be sure to thank them if you use their resources. Let's end on something less confusing and involved. Inviting friends over. Click the gear icon on the index. This will let you display what you do or do not want to be able to gather. Might be good for finding specific items, but not too much. It's why I didn't really go over it. Otherwise, click the Entry tab. Make sure you have the specific boxes ticked. Have them talk to Bolden and Moraby, and they will be able to come in whenever you're there. At that point, you begin to have a weekly checklist at the least. Send the Granary Mammoths out for the week. Check your workshop and fill out the five days. You'll be back daily if you want to min-max, essentially, so not quite weekly. 
but if you don't want to put in work, you can do this method. Then go check your animals and farm. Make sure there's plenty of feed and seeds. Make some of your crops into feed as needed, and don't forget about picking the items up. That upper limit on how much a mammoth can carry won't be an issue if you regularly return, but it does exist. The rest of your time can be spent relaxing taking care of your island, or heading back into your adventures. Take it at your pace, and as much effort you want to put into it. Go hardcore if you want, or just keep being relaxed with it. Just make sure you're having fun. And make sure you have a Paisa in the pen, and all the Paisa minions roaming around your island. Thank you for watching this little guide on the island sanctuary. Take it slow and relax. But while relaxing, rate, comment for the algorithm, and sub to me if you liked this. Keep on relaxing, and enjoy your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. Extra thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks to Amen Al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Frazier97, James Hall, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks for watching. Keep on relaxing.